Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void! Today, it's gonna be a 2v2 Midrake Madness here on Fields of Death. It's a ladder match featuring Baby Swiss and The Swiss. So, top side, we've got ourselves a Blue Protoss. It is The Swiss from the Hyper One Clan. And next door is his teammate, his son, Baby Swiss. Ah, Generational StarCraft 2. I love it. And in the bottom side, it is the enemy, a Purple Terran player, Wintery, and his Zerg teammate, Joe Coder. Woof. So, should be an excellent 2v2. They sent the replay to Sniper Monkey at the email address in the description here with the subject of Midrake Madness. Just make sure it is gold, platinum, or diamond level. And interesting, and I guarantee that Sniper Monkey will watch it, enjoy it, and let me know whether it is good to cast for mid-rank madness. Okay, so this, ooh, this probe is up to no good. Hmm, so we've got a gateway coming up from the Swiss, not a forge. Maybe he's just scouting. Just, just scouting. Eh? I, hmm, it's gonna be a proxy. It is gonna be a proxy here from the Swiss. On the other side, it just looks kind of normal. Walling off against early link pressure potential here. Joe Coder does have a pool on the way, but went hatch first here instead. So we just go in 16, 18, 17 timing. Nothing too crazy from him. Boom. Boom. Cybernetics core on the way from our guy, the Swiss. I don't know what this dude's up to. Proxy Stargate, maybe. I just don't know what the purpose of having a probe in this area is unless you're planning on proxying something. A Dark Shrine, maybe. Right, whatever things Protoss have uh, have ready to go for that kind of a stuff here. The Swiss is expanding. There's a drone up here harassing from Joe Coder. Interestingly enough, the Swiss saves baby Swiss, who is his SCB is throwing up a factory. Excellent. So, so, so good. We've got a command center on the way here from Wintry. So he's got a second base here, too. So this, man, this map is so dark. It is so hard to see the purple on this map. The rest of the colors are okay, but, man, the purple is basically invisible out here. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason that players don't generally enjoy the, the, darker, the darker maps, right? Without a lot of lighting on them, but... It's all good. No, mineral walk. Wait, are you really stuck here? Oh yeah, he is, look at that. So you can mineral walk out. He's trying to click here, but guess what? Joe Coder, if you clicked on the minerals, you can actually pass through another unit that's trapping you in place, right? You can go through units. You can't get through buildings that way, but you can totally, it's called mineral walking, right? You click on minerals, and if there's some, a unit in the way of the enemy or a friend or whatever, bam, you can go right through them and get out. So that's something Joe Coder Man, he was so close. He was so close to escaping that position, but unfortunately, no. Hellion's on the way from Baby Swiss. Love that. Ooh, bunch of wings from Joe Coder. Oh, he's going to try to knock down these back rocks and gain access into the Swiss and Baby Swiss's base. They've walled off the front door, but what about the back door? Oh, boy. This is dangerous. Joe Coder, I like it. He's got beacon lings, but he's also going up to a lair. So he's teching behind this. He's not just making lings for all time. Oh, this is why on maps you gotta pay attention to backdoor positions. And here it is. The Swiss is throwing up a proxy gate over here. What other tech does he have that's gonna be useful? Twilight Council. Yes, fine. Maybe Dark Shrine? Maybe. A it is a Dark Shrine. Okay, cool. So, Dark Shrine. So, he's gonna use this area to get DTs inside the house. Because this is walled off. And they. Oh. Wait, they did the thing. Okay, so they got through the rocks. Oh no, the Swiss! There are lings inside your house causing all sorts of problems. Hellions from the baby Swiss are trying to get damage done over here, but the hard wall prevents them from getting much done after getting a ton of damage here at Wintry's natural base. Holy, the number of speedlings. I don't know about this. No, are we seeing the death of the Swiss? can't fight against this many legs. Ah, see, that is one of the things that separates us mere mortals from the professionals. They can look at a situation like that and say, oh, do we have enough workers to defeat that ling group? And if the answer is no, you gotta run away, man. The Swiss had enough to shut it down. Okay. Uh, baby Swiss did, rather. The Swiss is at eight workers. Seems bad. 
Um, is he able to maybe afford a DT or two? Yes, actually. Yes, he is. Okay, so that's great. Um, they are, my gosh. They're kind of trying to wall off over here, but I really just feel like consistent Ling flooding might actually be enough to defeat Team North here. But that said, third base is on the way from Joe Coder. He's like, I did enough damage to take the Protoss down so far down. Whew. I mean, I would honestly pull the workers off of gas right now and just put the ones that I have onto minerals because I think minerals is going to be more important in recovering <laughs> in recovering your economy. All right, Blue Flame Hellions from Wintry showed up in the Swiss's natural base, and all those probes we were talking about are dead anyway. So that's actually pretty terrible stuff. Mm. Widow Mines are out from Baby Swiss. We know the power of the Widow Mine. DT from the Swiss is here. You don't have any safety spores. And it's five minutes into the game. Aha, you shall be punished. Joe Coder's got to retreat. Ooh, got to retreat all of his drones away from his main base. Dude, there's no detection in Wintry's base either. DT shenanigans. We had Ling shenanigans. We have DT shenanigans. We have Widow Mine shenanigans. This DT needs to get in Mineral Line. Oh, there's another one down here too. This is great. There's a scan. All right, so that DT dies to Blue Flame Hellions and Cyclones because of course, this DT doing a pretty good job of wiping out the spores that are trying to throw up, trying to get thrown up to deal with his shenaniganry. And oh, that DT is dead too. Okay, this DT, <laughs> more DTs, Zealots here in a wintry second base, which has been just absolutely cursed today. It has taken so much economic damage. Our dude Wintery is currently at 19 workers, which is better than I expected considering all of this damage he's been taking, especially at the second base. But okay, DT shenanigans have been largely dealt with. There's still a warp gate inside your base, guys, and this still isn't walled off against potential Ling Flood shenanigans. Oh, and then a couple of depths from the Swiss, just getting all in here, trying to get some kills too. Four kills on that one, three kills on that one. Not bad. It's like, hey, you made some spores, but did you make something that can handle uh, adepts? No. No, you absolutely did not. I like this third base from Baby Swiss. Okay, so the adepts are dead, but uh, yep, pretty good stuff. Five kills on that one for the death. Not too shabby. Overseer from Joe Coder. Try to come back home to deal with whatever's happening here. Baby Swiss has a single cyclone. Trying to burn down an orbital, and I think he's going to get it just because this is Mineric Madness. No, the repair is good enough. The repair is good enough. Hellions do not trade super well versus Cyclones, but there's another Cyclone here, so that'll help. Absolutely, yes. The Swiss trying to retreat with his guys, but... Uh, ooh, Widow Mine Trap. Widow Mine Trap! Guys, bait there. Oh, that was good. And he's going to kill... Oh, my gosh. And then he takes down a Hellion before he dies. That Zealot. Good stuff. That was amazing. More DTs from the Swiss. Okay, this game is absolute abject chaos. There's just attacks consistently here from Team North, which we love to see is consistent attacks. No, you can take down that Cyclone. Oh, DT blinks over the gap. Oh, what a play. Okay, this game's insanely good. Wow. <laughs> There's DT shenanigans, Adept shenanigans, Ling runbys. We got Cyclones. We got Widow Mines. We have all sorts of killer stuff. Your blink is not... Oh, it is. One of them managed to make it back over. That Cyclone died. Ugh. This is so good. DT blinking all over the place. Taking down the missile turret. Oh, a secondary scan came in. So this is giving the Swiss the time to rebuild his economy. He's back up to 32 workers, which is actually more than anybody in the game except for Joe Coder. So nice job macroing while doing all of this crazy aggression, the Swiss. I like it. Getting a third base at the gold on the left side. Not protected by anything, but again, it's not like your front door. I mean, this is your front door. Not like your back door isn't just wide open to any kind of an attack anyway. So sure, expanding here isn't all that much different, I would argue. Magfield Accelerator coming in from Baby Swiss. So he's going for the race car mech -y stuff, and so is Wintry. I don't know that I've seen a game where it's race car mech versus race car mech. It's interesting. Look at the stutter step on Baby Swiss. He's not just a moving. He was stutter stepping there. There's DT's in the mix, and Overseer is providing the detection from Team South, though. And that attack gets cleaned up, thanks partially to that Overseer just hanging out above the battle. The Swiss 
still has <laughs> that warp gate available. Ooh, Mutalisks in production from Joe Coder. I'm going to say, where's all his gas going? This guy's made nothing but Mutalisks, or rather, Lings for some time. Oh no, the forward warp gate. Save it, DTs. Warping in DTs. Oh my gosh, they're going to save it. They're going to save the thing. More scans. Overseer. We need you up here. We need you up here at this warp gate. Oh, this is... This is comeback time. Comeback time here from the Swiss. DT blinking over. Oh my gosh, that's so good. But the spines and the spores are just the anti-DT setup. And the DTs are not really intended to do anything there. That's not really how it works, is it? Changelings from Joe Coder cruising up to see what's going on. And more DTs coming out of the... And I think that's the last units to be warped out of that warp gate. Bam. Dead. Dead suck up. Oh my gosh. You can detect us, but if you can't stop us, does it really matter? Fuel's going down. That hurts, man. Wintry's just trying to get an economy going. He's at 28 SCVs at 10 minutes. It's brutal. Does he have a third base at all? I don't think he does. This mute account is intimidating all of a sudden. And by that, I mean there's eight of them. Huh. I felt like there was more. It's okay. It's fine. Drilling claws, liberators, more cyclones on the way from Baby Swiss. It's a fleet beacon. Fleet beacon here from the Swiss. Oh, is Carrier the answer here? Don't know. Don't know if that's what we're looking at. Liberator trying to set up, get some kills. But the problem is there's been so much DT shenaniganry that the spore count is fairly high. <laughs> and there's missile turrets. So Liberator follow-ups could have a bit of a difficult time. It's like when in a PvZ where the Protoss player opens with oracles and then tries to follow up with DTs. And it's like, look, man, you already forced out some spores to deal with the oracles. What are the DTs supposed to do? Always makes me laugh. Eighty supply and sixty-six supply for Team North. Ninety-nine supply and sixty-two supply for Team South. I'm no math expert, but I think Team South has the better overall supply here. And yeah, this Liberator just sets up under a spore, gets six kills, recognizes it's going to die. It's all good, and that's you know that's a pro level move thing. Sometimes you know there's not a good place to set up a Liberator that's not in range of a spore, so you just take the hits, kill as many workers as you can. And move on with your life. Let's support that. This is looking really good, man. Maybe Swiss's skills are improving. I guess what happens when you practice, it turns out. Tectonic destabilizers coming in from the Swiss. It's Tempest, actually, not carriers. Yeah, this is just... I don't care what missile turrets exist. I'm just here to kill a bunch of stuff. <laughs> okay, maybe... Maybe... I don't... Okay, I don't know if four Liberators was worth the kills you got there, necessarily. Though, like, one Liberator for six drones was pretty good. But uh, that was like four Liberators for, I don't know, three or four SCVs and maybe a couple Hellions. <laughs> yeah, the maths. The maths are not not as great there. So it is Tempest. So Phoenix out here from the Swiss 2. I don't know if that was an accident because everything else he's making is Tempests. Maybe one Phoenix just for good luck. Ooh, look at the Swiss. Ninja expanding bottom right just for the lulls. And here, so the Swiss double expanding. Remember when he had eight probes remaining? He's at 64 workers now, which is the most of anyone in the game. It's 49 for his teammate, Baby Swiss. 55 and 31 for Team South. Not looking good economically, guys. Mm, the Swiss warping in right where Joe Coder has an overlord. I love that. I like that. It's like, hey, what you going to do about it, huh? And the Mutos are like, well, we're really good against DTs. And here's the problem with your Mutalisks, Joe Coder. Joe Coder's Mutalisks... Well, everyone's mutalisk. They're not intended to sit at home. They're intended to be out there killing stuff, harassing, killing workers, sniping tech structures, supply blocking. If you're sitting at home with your hundred million mutalisks, you're doing it wrong. You gotta move out with them as soon as they're ready to go. Ooh, landing. Yeah, Vikings do pretty well against Hellions at cost because they do bonus versus mechanical, but... Um, they were outnumbered pretty horribly there. So here's the problem with your Tempests. Uh, our guy, Joe Coder, definitely has the capability to make a million Corruptors if he wants to. And a million Corruptors will absolutely decimate your Tempest Ball. So the Mutas are out! 
Mutas are ready to go. You don't have enough stalkers to handle these guys. Do they have any upgrades? They got plus one attack. The stalkers are zero, zero, and blink. It's not ideal. Oh, okay. So what do we have to deal with? A hundred mutalisks. Thirty-nine mutas. It's eight cyclones. Eight widow mines. Oh, widow mines might come into play here. At the lower levels, especially, widow mines are kind of just a super good anti mutalisk thing. Also, Thors. Also, kind of turrets to a certain extent. Also, Marines. Bunker. Oh, my gosh. No. No! No! Why? <laughs> he went back in. 29 mutas died. He went back in. Ooh, that was a nice widow mine hit, too. On the race car mech. All right. The Phoenix are to deal with the mutas. I guess the Swiss was aware of them a little bit sooner than I thought he was. Oh, boy. <laughs> I love that he saw the lines coming and was like, oh, Widow Mines. He pulls away, then he's like, wait, I got this. Bruh. And then loses 29 Mutalisks to Widow Mines shots. Yes. And also there's Phoenix out now, which is pretty much the ultimate anti-Mutalisk unit in the game. And more Widow Mines coming out here from Baby Swiss. This is why. This is why I don't like Mutalisks in lower level games. There's just too much. There's just too much that absolutely obliterates them. It takes a higher level player to use them effectively. And even higher level players, masters level players, GM level players, sometimes they'll just take a, a widow mind to the face after spending, you know, after spending most of the game just not losing to widow minds and doing a great job against them. Oops. One misstep and every one of their mutas is dead. Oh, gosh. Over the... Uh, okay, if you don't micro the Phoenix at all, it's not great. Joe Coder, he knows. He's like, I'm pretty good against Tempest, though. My gosh, you're just making more and more Mutalisks. Is he giving them better upgrades? He's got plus two attack and plus one armor. So, like, yeah... I guess, but man, BB Swiss is just throwing up Widow Mines in just different clumps all over the place. It's all good. Anywhere these mutas think about flying, they gotta worry about those Widow Mine groupings, man. Oh, look at this. It's like Battle Cruiser Widow Mine. It's bait. It's the bait. He's like, hey, actually, the Archons aren't good bait because mutas don't want to fight those guys at all. Oh, oh, oh. This was good bait, though. Ah! <laughs> The race car mech just walking right over him. Oh, yes, come over here. The Archons are ready for you. If you want to clump up and try to kill those Widow Mines, got all of them but one. So other than that one misstep where he decided to go into a group of Widow Mines, lost every one of his Mutos, he's been okay. He's been all right, and that's what I'm saying. Like, the power of Mutas is such... Oh, do not think he's engaging here. Oh, okay, took one hit. Could have been much, much, much worse. Hey, DT, deal with these turrets for us. All right, babe. Thanks, babe. Oh, just the stacking. He's got the overseers, which is what you want to be doing here. But, man, alive. Pulling back. Tissue regeneration means if, if these mutas are injured, which they are, they will heal up pretty darn quickly. Archon's in here going after Wintry's third base. There's not really much of a ground army here for Wintry to deal with this. The Archons are finding a planetary that's being repaired. So, okay. if it, uh, uh. The Muta's come into the action, though. Man, snipe off a Tempest so quickly. Oh, but you have to re-repair. They are. They're back on the repair here. This is not bad. This is not terrible stuff. God, turrets are just getting three hits all over the place. You know, if the Phoenix ran in there and lifted up those SCVs, it'd go a lot better. That Muta flock is just big. It's 44. It's getting plus three flyer, plus two flyer carapace. Wintry has enough money to repair pretty much forever here. You know, if the Tempest just kind of focused on these SCVs from a distance, that would be fine too. Really would. The Swiss uh, is warping in some stuff from his bottom right base. 
But unfortunately, there's a million mutas and overseers, and these DTs are in a lot of trouble. So that did not go very well whatsoever. Uh, was that a... I assume I missed a drop attempt from Baby Swiss, because there's uh, medivacs inside the house? What? Okay, so these are Widow Mines. These are medivacs. The medivacs are a decoy. It's like, look at me! I'm dropping in your base! of as much of a decoy. I'm not sure Team South even recognized or saw that until after it was over. Weird stuff, man. I don't know. Yeah, DTs, Tempest working together to wipe down missile turrets. That's what I like to see from team games is weird combinations of units, right? Like DTs and Tempest going after a base. That's not something you see very lot, a lot at the high levels whatsoever. These mutas are just asking. Battle cruisers being produced now by the baby Swiss. Wintry's got battle cruisers too. Get remember? Okay, so the Tempest though. Tempest exists solely to handle these cap ships, man. Solely. This repair though, pretty amazing stuff. Bait it over the widow mines. Bait it over the widow mines. <laughs> mutas did wipe out the bottom right. Sneaky, sneaky. Oh, here it is. Here's the bait. The sneaky base of the Swisses. Ugh. Ugh. And repair it. Repairing it. Oh, barely. Barely repairing it. Bait, 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 bait. No, too smart. Too smart. Too smart for it. Oh, gosh. Uh, no, no. Uh. <laughs> so many of those mutas are super red. Yeah. Tissue regeneration, let's go. Man, this battle cruiser has been. Oh. Oh, no, but you have to actually be being repaired if you're going to survive against these Tempest, man. Gosh, dang. Ugh. Long distance snipes. Repair it. No. It's 149 to 80, 87 supply for Team North, 156 and 46 for Team South. Oh, gosh. Oh, Widow Mines are so good at this level of StarCraft. I mean, they're pretty good at the pro level too, but... Dude, no. Uh, uh, it's gonna drift. It's gonna drift. No, he doesn't drift into the stack of Widow Mines. We need to convince him to go over there. There are no Widow Mines in Baby Swiss's base, though. Look at this. I like how he lowers the supply depots. He's like, uh, maybe they won't see them if they're lowered. Yeah, Wintry's in a bit of trouble economically. Not having a great time. The Swiss has a million stalkers, but uh, as mentioned previously, they don't have any attack or armor upgrades, so they're actually really bad against plus three mutas with plus two armor. And, uh, that number of stalkers wasn't going to do anything to this number of mutalists, even if the upgrade situation was reversed, but still. So what do we have to deal with a giant flock of mutas? We have Widow Mines. Liberators are on the way. We have some Phoenix. That seems good. Joe Coder says, I'm sorry. Okay, but the mutas have to be micro... No. It's tough. It's really tough. This was like, it's good. Don't worry about it. Oh, girl, the Widow Mines. The Widow Mines have to be burrowed, baby Swiss. Okay, splash damage at the form of Liberators. Everything Team North has right now is anti mutalist shenanigans. Oh, they wandered too close. They got too close to the sun. The Mutalisks, no. Oh, are they coming up on, they're coming up on another group. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and another one! <laughs> uh, baby Swiss's SCVs are attacking stuff because I guess there's nothing else for them to do? I don't even know, dude, how many mutas have died today. It is 109 mutalisks. This is what happens in every Mindrake Madness game that involves mutas. A hundred of them die. And then I'm sad, and then the Zerg player loses, and it's just, this is why. This is why mutas are not good at the Midrake Madness level. Like, it's it's a weird unit, right? They're very good at, like, Bronze League. Because nobody knows how to deal with mutalists except Bronze League. Mass mutas wander in and wipe everything out, no big deal. 
But then as you get up to the higher leagues, they get bad because everybody knows how to deal with them. And then they get kind of good again up at the super, super highest echelon of StarCraft because the players have the skill to use the mutas in a way that even they're effective against players who know how to deal with them. So Joe Coder and Winter Ear are 109 and 29 supply respectively. Baby Swiss and The Swiss are at 109 and 93 supply respectively. This has been an absolute bloodbath on both sides here, man. Like, Team North does not have a giant maxed out scary army. They're just trying to hold on here with a kind of anti mutalisk army a little bit. But oh, I love this Baby Swiss Cyclone so much trying to take down Hatchery by his lonesome. He's very brave. Baby Swiss is making nothing but Widow Mines right now. The Swiss has nothing going on, and neither does Joe Coder. Liberators, the Baby Swiss, hanging out top left, I guess for defensive purposes, in case the Mutas find it. How many more groups of... Oh, there's one. <laughs> Quick, burrow the Widow Mines in strategic locations. Ooh, that's a good one. Ow! Quick, lift the queen. Or whatever, fine. Tepus can handle that, no problem. This is so scrappy. Yeah, just Widow Mines. Just sending Widow Mines down to the south somewhere. Wintry taps out and Joder GG's too. It's like, wow, well, I can't really 2v1 this thing. I've got 49 supply available. Oh, did he just lose a huge group of Mutas? He was at 66, 82 supply. So hold on, hold on. 82 supply. He's sitting here at 15 mutas after losing over 100 of them. He's down to 11 mutas after losing 119 of them. Then he chases these guys and catches another Widow Mine hit. Ugh. He has eight mutas remaining. All of them are in various states of injury. None of them are healthy at all. Ow! Okay. And then that's it. He's got two mutas left. He has lost 128 of them. Here are the two mutas. They are dead. Joe Cutter GG's out. And Baby Swiss and The Swiss are your winners in 25 minutes and 42 seconds. That was... Woo! That was something. That was so fun. I love the Swisses expanding to the quarters. I love the early attack of the Lings just completely decimating the Swiss and Baby Swiss having to hold the fort down and being aggressive the whole time and the warped in DTs inside the main base of Team South just trying to keep the pressure down here so that the Swiss could build his economy back up and it worked. And then the weird comp of like Tempest and a couple unupgraded Stalkers and some DTs and some Phoenix. Yay! It's like, all right, it worked. It worked in the end, but such a weird composition and I love it. Baby Swiss, the Widow Mines, going for the Hellions and the Cyclones and the race car mech stuff. That was super fun. And then, yeah, I think Wintery, uh, Wintery just struggled a lot through most of the game. He never really got up to like three, four bases. Like you kind of need to in a 25-minute game of StarCraft when everybody else is there. And then Joe Coder, he signed his own death warrant when he was like, I'm going to go Mutas. Dude, honestly. Honestly. Against a Protoss and a Terran team. You know how many answers to Mutalisks those guys have combined? The Phoenix, the Archons, the Widow Mines, the Liberators. That was the play here today. And that is the reason that 130 Mutalisks died. Gah, the massacre. Resources lost here, 35,000 for the Swiss, which is actually surprisingly more than the Zerg player lost at 100, and, or th rather just 30. Hmm, Incredible. Incredible game. That was super, super fun. I mean, Sniper Monkey was really excited about it when he sent it to me. Now I can see why. So, excellent, excellent work there, Baby Swiss and The Swiss. It wasn't an easy game to win, but you pulled it out in the end because you were working together and you persevered and you kept the pressure on the other side of the map and Widow Mines. And Widow Mines are really good. So, GG. And that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. <laughs> and a excellent 2v2 mid rank Madness. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.